Hey everybody, before we get started, we just wanted to remind you all that our profitable can't talk profitable <laughs> estimating course is this weekend. Yes. This is our second time putting this on. It was amazing the first time. It is your chance to have Scott's undivided attention to show you as he shows you how to learn your numbers, know your numbers, and then take all that and put it into an estimate. So you hear us talk about numbers all the time. And yep. if you're like, I don't even know what that means. And I don't know how that's relevant to me. And I don't know how to put that into an estimate. This is your chance to learn all of those things. It is a limited group size. Uh, and we do that on purpose because we want everybody to be able to get one-on-one -on -one attention with getting their questions answered. It's, it's an amazing, it goes fast. It's, um, I don't know. We just got such awesome feedback last time. Yeah, Everybody awesome. loved it. I'm, yeah. I'm just, I mean, other, I'm trying not to just like glow about ourselves, <laughs> but they did. Everybody loved it. It is, it's that course that you need. It's that course that everybody who is like, I don't know. I thought it was making money, but it, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. This, it, this is why. <laughs> People are shocked when they start going through it and start learning their numbers and what it actually costs to run certain things. Like Equipment's a huge one. People are, like that yeah. one's always a mind blowing number to people when they start seeing it. It's it it does, and I don't know if I get mad or frustrated or sad. I don't know what the emotion is, but there are so many landscapers that are not making good money. They're mm -hmm. not. The yep. national average of net profit is two percent. That is garbage. That is garbage, garbage, garbage. <laughs> and so, if you think about it, and if you don't know what your net profit is then you're probably in that majority that mm -hmm. it is 2% because if you don't know your numbers, I'm sorry, but you don't know what you're doing. And it just, I get, I get, I get riled up <laughs> because it's upsetting to put forth so much work and to work so hard and to not get the return on it. Yep. And it, and it, the information it, is available. Like we can show you how to do it. So yeah. if, you, so I'm just begging you, if you, do, if you, if you're feeling upset because you don't know what you're doing and you're not making the money, Sign up, please. Let, mm -hmm. let Scott walk you through it. it, it you don't have to have another year yep. like that. So, and, and if you look at this and you're like, I just can't afford that course right now. Can you afford not to do it? Can you afford to not How or keep losing money? How many jobs have you lost your ass on? And one of, the, like, one of these jobs will pay for it. And so, oh, yeah, I guarantee it. Yeah. I, I hate to be the tough love, but you, <laughs> you can't afford to not. You can't afford to not. Because what are you going to do? Just continue to work and not make money? That's yeah, that, that, ridiculous. Those are your choices. You can continue doing what you're doing and and keep losing <laughs> money or not making money and get or working all season long and be like, go to your accountant and you're like, you didn't make any money this year. You can keep doing that, <laughs> or you can take the choice and, and get into a course like we have here and learn your numbers, learn how to read your P and L, learn how right. to price your work accordingly so you can make a profit and know your bottom dollar. This is something that. I, I never thought about it as much as I had until I started hearing some feedback. People love the fact that they can see what my break-even point is. So you know exactly down down to the penny. Oh yeah, if you, you follow this, the overhead budget that you set up, you'll know exactly how much money you need to make this year. You're not just like, I don't know, I'm just going to work my ass off and hope it works out. Well, I'm talking down to the job, like oh, at yeah. the estimate level. Oh, yeah, You can see that's true. to the bottom to the penny. Oh, yeah. I went big. You're going to the upper job. You know, getting down to your overhead, where you can go. So we, when you go to that customer and say, here, Mr. And Mrs. Smith, here's your estimate of whatever, $5,000 for this bid. And you tell them this and they can like, well, I have someone down the road that can do it for a thousand dollars less than you. Can you do that? You can look at your estimate and be like, no, I'm sorry. You know, I'm only going to make this much. You think of this in your head, but you, you can say, but you can say, no, I can go only to this point. And that's it. You know, to the penny, how low you can go. You have one number you can adjust and that's your profit margin. And you can decide how much profit you want to make on that job. And that's it. Yes. And if you're unwilling to take less profit, then you don't adjust your price. Yep. Um, and I, this just kind of popped in my head while Scott was talking, this knowledge is very powerful mm -hmm. because it empowers you to, like Scott said, it, it empowers you to make decisions as to whether or not you can adjust your prices or not. It empowers you to only take on work that will make you money because too many landscapers are doing work that they're like maybe kind of breaking even at, but not really making a bunch of money. And so all that's doing is keeping you busy, but it's not actually providing you any profit. So if you want to live the, the lifestyle that you want to have, that's the reason you went into business in the first place. I feel like we've gotten a little soapboxy here <laughs> and a little bit of tough love. 
but I feel like y'all need it sometimes. Mm-hmm. It's just this is a, just is a little bit of tough love. It comes with a it comes with a hug, but you have. You've got to get this straightened out. You just have to. So. You do. And it, it, it is a life-changing thing once you start seeing these numbers and start putting the, you know, applying this to your business. You're like, holy cow, I should have done this a long time ago. Because you start having that money come in. You can do what you want to do. You want to buy that new piece of equipment? Well, you can budget for it and you can plan for it accordingly and buy it when you have the money. Like, right. You can take your family on vacation. You can buy something for your spouse, whatever it is. It's, you can do those nice things because you have money coming in. You can see it. And you can make adjustments for that. Okay. You feel okay. I feel a little bit better now that we got that out. But yes. we do have to hear from our sponsors real quick. Okay. And then we will, be act, we will be back with an actual podcast episode, <laughs> not just us tough loving all of you about your numbers. I promise. We'll be right back. This podcast is brought to you by Busy Busy. Busy Busy is so simple to use. And it's the most reliable GPS time tracking app on the market. And the best part is, it was built for landscapers. Busy Busy's founder created Busy Busy because he owns multiple construction companies and needed to understand better which projects were making him money and which projects were killing him. Payroll is the highest variable cost in the project, so you better be tracking it. Busy Busy does this better than anyone else. So download Busy Busy today, and don't forget to mention the Million Dollar Landscaper podcast to get three free months. We want to take a quick second to tell you about our friends over at Cycle CPA. I can't even express to you how important it is to have a good accountant on your side. You know you want accurate bookkeeping and financial statements every month. Instead, you're often left with limited time to focus on the accounting side of your business and no reports to show for it. At Cycle CPA, the landscaping accountants, they not only handle the bookkeeping, but also provide landscape industry benchmarking, job costing, financials by service line, advisory meetings, and much more. Cycle CPA has a team of landscaping accountants available to provide anything from bookkeeping to CFO services. Visit CycleCPA.com and for $100 off, mention the Million Dollar Landscaper podcast. All right. Today, we're going to talk about one of my favorite quotes that uh, I reread here recent, recently. Uh, it's the James Clear, the Atomic Habits book. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a quote from there. And the quote is, every action you take is a vote for the kind of person that you think you are. That's James Clear. That's not my quote. Um, And since this podcast is all about landscaping business, I just kind of want to adjust it a little bit to um, every action that you take is a vote for the kind of business owner owner that you think you are. And so this kind of lines up with our, you know, pre-podcast rant that we had about knowing your numbers. (laughs) But the point is, are the actions that you are currently taking in line with who you think you are as a business owner. What kind of business owner do you think you are? And are the actions that you're taking in line with that? Look at your schedule. Look at what you do on a daily basis. Because regardless of of who you think you are, look at your schedule, and that's going to tell you who you're actually being and what you're actually doing. And this, once again, this is tough love. And, I mean, I have to tough love myself with this all the time because I'm always like exercise and being healthy is like so important to me. And then I look at my schedule and I'm like, well, I, I haven't worked out in like two months, but whatever, it's so important to me. You know what I'm saying? And so I, I, these are the same tactics that I use to tough love myself in other areas of my, of my life. And so, um, I just think it's really important be, you know, especially now that, you know, it's the beginning of 2023. Now's an awesome time. People are setting resolutions. They're getting, they're planning for the next season. So I think it's now is a very good time to sit down and think about what kind of business owner do you want to be in 2023? Do you have anything else to add? Well, I think it's very important, especially even looking at your business in that aspect because of hiring. Everybody, like, everybody's having a hard time finding people, and I think it's going to continue this year. And um, I'm trying to remember the quote I just heard, and it was I just told you this the other day. It was... Um, a players don't want to work for B leaders. Oh yeah, I've heard so, various variations yeah. of that. Yeah, and this is so true. And if you really look at your business, you're like, oh, I have a great culture and, and all this and stuff. And you really start taking a deep dive into your business and looking at it. Maybe you don't. Maybe that's why you have such a high turnover. You know, it's not saying you don't, but you but have at to least take a look. At look it. into it. Yes. Yeah. Um, on, just on this note, um, once you get an idea of the kind of business owner that you do want to be for 2023, I want you to think about what kind of, uh, actions that you're going to commit to taking towards 
working tor- towards being that business owner. Because once again, it's one thing to just like think that I'm going to do this, but it's a whole nother thing to like, you know, rubber to the road and actually take some action and do something. So uh, along those same lines as well, what actions are you going to stop doing in order to be the kind of business owner that you want to be? Because there's probably a lot of things that are clogging up your schedule that are jacking up your days that you don't need to be doing. Yep. So once again, I'm oh, doing this myself. Oh my goodness. Don't even get me started <laughs> on Scott Moltran and the number of things that he needs to take off of his schedule. It's an ongoing problem. He's finally getting in, looking into getting an assistant. I've been bugging him about it for quite some time. We'll just say that some, some trains are faster than others. Some are a little <laughs> slow. Anyway, there's no judgment here. There's no judgment, but look at your, look at your schedule and what do you as the business owner, not what don't you need on your schedule and what can you find somebody else to help? Well, you I with? guarantee there's stuff that you can take off your schedule. If you're going Always. out changing oil on your equipment or sharpening blades and you have a team, yeah, you should not be doing that. Right. <laughs> you so. should be going to the bank and doing all this, some of those things. It's, there's a lot of things I guarantee that you can look at your business and, and get off your plate. Mm-hmm. Um, we have people that are in the academy that are, that are um, starting to use a, um, a virtual receptionist. Uh, mm-hmm. Jill's office is a great example of this. They were on the podcast. Yeah, we just mm-hmm. had them on the podcast, I don't know, a few weeks ago. And they can take so much off your plate just getting back to customers or accepting those phone calls. And, you know, we hear in the industry all the time that customers get so mad because they can't get through to the, the contractor. And I get it. You're out in the field, you're working, you're doing your thing. And you're like, I, just gotta t- I can't take this phone call right now. I'm, I'm so busy. Mm-hmm. Well, they've hired a virtual receptionist to take that off their plate. And like, they're so excited about it now because they're like, oh, I can go home and, and be with my family. I can go home and not have to worry about getting back to all these people. So that's the whole point of yes. being a business owner. Yes. <laughs> so, you didn't set yourself up just to have another yes. job. So um, that's just along the same lines. It's like, okay, now that you've got an idea of the business business owner that you want to be and you know what you need to be doing and you're, you've got an idea of what you need to stop doing, get real specific. What is one Small, doesn't have to be huge, but what's one action that you can take literally right now today to move yourself towards being that business owner that you want to be in 2023? Make it actionable, make it doable. You can do it like something you can do right now. What can you do to take a step towards being that business owner that you want to be? Well, and I think going back to this book, this is a real good book to, we have a podcast coming up about books. I didn't put this one on there particularly, but this is a, this is an amazing book to get you thinking and looking at your life to take those small steps. That's what you have to take as a small, you know, put the one foot in front of the other type of deal. You know, it's well, how to eat an elephant yeah. one bite at a time. Yeah. So <laughs> this book breaks it down really well. Yeah, it is. It is one of uh, I've read that and Tiny Habits. I like them. I kind of smoosh the information from them both together. Mm-hmm. And so anyway. That is my, but this is my, all those questions, that was my, this is my wish for you today, yes. is for you to, to take some time and, and honest to God, sit and think about this. I'm not just trying to be like, ooey, wooey, hairy, fairy, like, please legitimately sit and think about this because nobody else is going to fix your business for you. You are the owner. You're, you're, you're the boss of you. And, and so you get to be in charge of you. Look at your schedule. Well, your schedule reflects your life. What are you going to commit to? Go ahead. I was going to say, this is something that. You know, it's, it's like uh, New Year's resolutions. You know, people say they're going to do this, they're going to do this. But I think, like, to me, you have to put this on your schedule. Like, plan this out. Like, once a month, ask yourself these questions. I think this is something you need to be looking these at. These are and, great review questions yeah. to look at if you're planning once a month. Yeah, because, like, if you, say, in April, when work starts coming in like crazy and you're just, you know, doing estimates and, and getting things done and, are you looking at these, you know, and considering what can I do to be better yeah. at this or what can I do well, to help? Because it can, it can lead into a whole slew of another of these to- coaching type questions. Like what, what do you, okay. If you're not the business owner that you want to be yet, what do you need to learn? Mm-hmm. And where can you get, learn this information? It just, it leads you down. There's, it's like, I was trying not to get too many questions on this, but it can, it, it just, but think about these things. Mm-hmm. Um, coach yourself a little bit. You know, it's like, okay, mm, I know that I didn't make the money that I wanted to last year. I felt like my schedule was full and I was working all the time, but I wasn't making any money. Well, boom, we have an estimating course coming up. 
Is that something that you're willing to commit to and you're willing to commit to learning? What kind of business owner are you? Are you a business owner that that takes the course for the week that, you know, puts up, it, it is, it's not, it's not a free course. It, there's money involved, but what you learn in that course is tenfold. You'll make the money back tenfold. So are you the type of business owner that invests in your business? Do you invest in your knowledge or are you the type of business owner that doesn't take any action and is like, uh, I'm just going to keep watching free stuff on YouTube and hope I figure it out. <laughs> I'm, I'm not making a judgment call. It is up to you. You, yeah. I can't decide that for you. I can't tell you what kind of business owner that you are. And so it's, but just realize that it's a choice. It is. It absolutely is. Uh, one of our, I'm trying to remember, it was our accountability meeting we just had. I think it was the accountability meeting we just had at the beginning of the month. And we were talking about people talking about their goals they had for the month. And one of the members, they were talking about, you know, it was uh, creating systems and procedures. And, and it was one of those things I was like, you know, what would hold you back from achieving mm -hmm. these goals? And a couple of the people that actually, not just this one person in particular, but a couple people answered, it's me, myself. I'm the one that's holding myself back from doing this. And, okay, then how can you overcome this? You know, what can we do to, to mm -hmm. get you to take these actions? Like they, this one particular person wanted to make the system procedures uh, for their lawn maintenance side of things. What, what can you do to, to get to that point? And he's like, I just had to get started. Okay. Well, exactly. Like and, and if all you have to do is get started, once again, we're back to what's that one very easy, simple step that you can take today. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes actions pre precede motivation. If you wait for yourself to be like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be so motivated to get these done. <laughs> Good luck. I'm waiting for my gym motivation to come as well. Sometimes you just have to start taking action and then that action, um, We'll get the juices flowing and then the motivation comes yeah. well as we say do it dirty you just have to get started yep like you can always go back and improve it that's where i told them with these systems and procedures and checklists just start it like i i remember doing the the tool checklist that one of the first checklists i made so simple so basic yeah but i i you updated added to it, it a million times <laughs> oh i didn't think about this or i, I should have added this you know and it's one of those things that just kept growing and building but I just took the step to get going and it, it just started making an instant uh, change in our business. So mm -hmm. anything you do, well, I think you people overthink started. it and they think that it has to be like magical and amazing and this big thing. It really doesn't. Yep. It really doesn't just, yep. just do something. Yeah, <laughs> so. absolutely. Just, just get started. Do it dirty. <laughs> yeah. Cause every action you take is yep. a vote for the kind of person that you think you are. Thank you, James clear. So, <laughs> All, All right. right. On that note, I've got some, got some questions. Questions. Yep. So you got a dog in your armpit over there. I do. I've had a dog in my lap this whole entire time. Well, it's. I better just pet him, or otherwise he walks around and bumps the camera. So, I've been petting him the whole time. Okay. So, what did your fifteen-year-old self imagine you'd be doing right now? Oh, fifteen-year-old. Um, Can you remember back that far? <laughs> I. Just assumed I'd be working for my dad. I think at that point I was just because I was working for him at that time, just mm -hmm. doing landscaping. And I didn't. I know you had a brief dream of wor of being of working on cars and going away to mechanic school, I but did. I couldn't remember the timeline of that. I did, and I don't remember. I, I remember. I know at that time I was looking into cars and stuff, but I don't think I really got into it till I started driving more. Oh, so. Okay, so this preceded um, that. So yeah, I think I was just planning on just working for my dad and just working away. Okay. <laughs> What entrepreneurial tricks have you discovered to keep yourself focused and productive on your day-to-day -day busy schedule? To me, it was writing things down and putting it in some kind of thing. I use Asana yeah, and just literally the night before writing things down and putting it in there. And I don't necessarily put it in any particular order. I do that usually in the morning. It's just, just a brain dump, it, it sounds like. Just, if I get it out there and I have a list of things, I typically will get them done. Mm-hmm. Yes. You, well, you have to get them out of your head. Yes. I mean, and I'm just assuming that you're probably like a lot of business owners. Like if it's not written down, you're not going to do it because you're not going to remember it. No, I, well, maybe, like, I don't know if this is old age or just your brain is full, but trying well, to remember everything is impossible. I don't think it has anything. I remember doing this I know. younger. I'm just, like, I'm just poking at you. Yeah, but my problem was like, I wasn't sleeping at night because I'd, I'd be thinking, oh, like tomorrow I got to do this. I got to remember to do this. Yeah. And I, like tell, I remember telling myself in my head, got to do this, got to do this, got to do this. And I would sometimes remember, but sometimes I didn't. Yeah. So it wasn't until I learned to down. sit down at night, write everything I, had, I need to do the next day. It cleared my head and I was able to sleep better, yep. which was awesome because I need as much sleep as I can. So yes. 
um, yeah, you just you have to write them down. Okay. What key activities would you recommend entrepreneurs to invest their time in? Key activities? Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely be reading. Um, you can, there's always, there's so much stuff to learn out there. Like you can never stop reading and learning. Um, talk to other people, talk to other business owners, even if they're not in the same industry, talk to them, learn, um, uh, like the heating and air conditioning industry. Like there's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Like I remember forth. talking to people that are in the con, uh, I'm sorry, concrete industry, mm-hmm. just learning from them and, and just getting out there and networking and talking to people. Um, that was a huge, huge help just to see what's out there and then figure out how I can improve our business, myself, whatever it was. Um, but those are probably the two key things. Keep learning. All right. Sounds amazing. Okay. Yeah. All right. On that note, think about what kind of business owner you want to be for 2023 and start taking action towards that. Either by taking action towards it or re- think about what you've got to remove from your schedule. Yep. Regardless, just make sure you have that future vision of yourself in mind and t- make sure use that as your filter. When it comes to what am I going to do and what am I not going to do? Be like, hmm, th- is that in line with my 2023 version of myself? Yeah. And if you need help understanding your numbers, understanding how to put together a estimating, profit estimating, yes, then definitely get into our profit estimating course. It's happening this weekend. Um, so tonight, or it's Friday now. You've got time it to starts, sign up. It starts tomorrow morning, Saturday. Yep. Uh, definitely get in there. Um, it, it's definitely something that will change your life once you start understanding and start using it. And the, just to give you a quick thing, you're going to get walk away with uh, all the templates. So if you need templates for estimating, you need templates for lawn care. Uh, I'm sorry, True. landscaping. The spreadsheet, like the, the actual all physical spreadsheets that we use. Yes. Like not, we're not just going to like tell. This isn't like, oh, here I'm just going to tell you. Oh no, 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 no. We've done the math for you. It's yeah. just plug and play, <laughs> which is very, very nice. You'll be able to spit out an estimate in like 20 minutes. Oh yeah. By the time yeah. you're done, it you it it'll take the weekend of doing the front end work mm-hmm. of getting them set up. But then after that, 20 minute episodes yeah, or once, ep- 20 minute episodes. I'm thinking about <laughs> podcasts. 20, 20 minute <laughs> estimates. Yeah, it makes it very very simple to do. No matter what kind of estimating you do, we've done all the hard work for you. Um, so don't be stressed out like, oh, I just don't know my numbers. I don't know how to get to numbers. We're going to show you how to do all this. We're giving you the calculators to make it very, and very ask simple. all of the questions. Yep. Um, there's no dumb question. I feel like a teacher. I'm like, there's no dumb questions. There isn't. But there's really not. You just don't know. Sometimes you don't know what you don't know. And so, and you don't know until someone tells you. And mm-hmm. it's okay to ask. And don't <laughs> let yourself like feel like, well, I just, I just don't know. I'm not prepared for it. Don't think um, about it that way. Yeah. We had no idea like how to get these numbers and what these numbers meant. We, you know, we've heard the terms overhead and equipment costs and, and labor burden. We understood those number of things, but it wasn't until we actually started taking a deep dive and start just putting in play and practice. And we started understanding how everything kind of goes together. Well, so. Even if you don't consider yourself a numbers person, that's why we give you all of the done for you spreadsheets and everything, mm-hmm. because literally all you need to know how to do is to be able to take things and plug them in and it will spit it all out for you. So yeah. it doesn't matter if you're an air quotes number person or not. Yeah. Don't let something simple like that hold you back. So. Exactly. Take those actions. Yep. <laughs> all right, guys, get in the numbers course and we'll talk to you soon. Have a great day. <laughs>